afternoon or good morning, depending on where you're dialing in for, from everybody. It is lovely to see so many people here today. I'd like to start by acknowledging that wherever we are, um, we are dialing in from Aboriginal or Torres Strait Islander country. Um, today, I'm based on Ngunnawal country, and I know all of you are on different countries. If you want to introduce yourself in the chat, please do share the country from which you are dialing in on. And we take a moment now just to pause and reflect on the fact that this always was, always will be Aboriginal or Torres Strait Islander land. And we pay our respects to elders past and present. We extend that respect to any First Nations people who are joining us today. I am absolutely ecstatic to be able to be presenting this session today. So I'm Trish, I'm the Director of Policy and Education for the Australian Library and Information Association for anybody I haven't met before. And I, I was saying to the fantastic team we have today that I was in a Vet Libraries Australia meeting on Monday. And one of the topics that came up was the fact that Vet Libraries are doing incredible work and uh, such fantastic places to work. And yet sometimes their profile is maybe not as high as public libraries or university libraries. And so it's really great to be able to get this stellar group from TAFE Queensland to come and give us a bit of an insight into what's happening in vet libraries. And look, for any of you who are not as intimately familiar with vet libraries, I hope this is an eye-opening experience. And for those with uh, more experience in the sector, I know that there will be a huge amount of stuff that you can take away. So without any further ado, I am going to stop talking because I'm the least interesting person on this call. And I'm going to hand over to our team. The way that we'll do this session today is that I will introduce each one of our speakers uh, in turn, and they will do a short part of the presentation. We'll hold questions till the end. If you've got questions, though, and you want to put them down before you forget, please drop them into chat, and we'll be monitoring the chat as we go through, and all those questions can come through at the end. So we'll start off then, and I would. it's my great pleasure to introduce Angela Orth. Uh, Angela is and I've got her bio in front of me now. And the best bit I'm going to say is it says she's an experienced library manager with a love of working in libraries. I think love of working in libraries probably is one of the things that drives many of us. She believes in listening, supporting, encouragement. And this is my bit that I like. And when required, an inner core of steel. And I think we will see that coming through very much in the presentation today. Um, Strong leadership and strategic thinking are two of the things that I would absolutely always associate with Angela. And look, I would say I've known Angela for quite some time now, and I am always blown away with what she can achieve and her absolute passion to bring out the best for her library and the best for the students and the best for the institution. So without any further ado, take it away, Angela. Well, thank you, Trish, for that lovely introduction. That was um, really kind of you. Um, I really want to thank Alia for inviting TAFE Queensland to take this opportunity and host and for hosting us on this webinar. We're really thrilled to be able to do this um, um, and to be able, it's given us an opportunity to be able to look back and to be able to assess where we were to um, where we are now. And we called our, and I say I, or we, I mean the royal we, um, and I thought, well, what can I call this webinar, you know, that gives it a little bit of oomph, but also really encapsulates how we feel. And um, I'm not sure how many of you know um, retro music, but the song Don't Stop Believing by Journey um, really seemed to, apart from some um, person walking the avenue, um, we don't do any of that, um, but the part don't stop believe, believe and hold on to that feeling um, and that's part of the chorus of the song and it's an upbeat song about what can be and that encapsulates um, where we started and where we are now and way back in the early um, 2010s and 2011, um, our organisation, um, we were individual regions, 10 plus individual regions, and um, we we're all working away very hard in our library areas with our own library organisation, all 
um, doubling up on everything everybody else was doing, but for our own um, students in our regions. And while we're all achieving great things in those regions, we recognised because we were a collaborative group, because that's what librarians and library professionals do, one of the things we do best, is that um, there were so many things that we could come together on and let's, let's come together and purchase this thing, let's come together and advocate for that. And it began to become very clear once TAFE Queensland came together and all the individual regions came together and we were TAFE Queensland, we still weren't one cohesive library group. And the powers that be could see how we operated and it was just part of our our psyche. And so our executive team and the board could clearly see that TAFE Queensland could come together in many different groups, but that library, the libraries should be one of the first to go. It was a scary um, concept, but exciting at the same time. And we, at the core of everything we did, we believed we could get there. We knew it would really be hard. We knew it would be bumpy. And we knew that there would be definite challenges ahead. Um, what did we want to achieve? We wanted to achieve the very best we could for our students. We wanted equity of access for our students. We had students who were studying in the far north Queensland um, regions and areas who had to um, go on a queue for the very textbook that they needed to be able to um, succeed in a diploma of nursing. And they might have, because of budgetary constraints, they might have a, you know, a 12 month wait for that textbook. Well, their course only went for 18 months and their socioeconomic situation was that they couldn't purchase that textbook. And so then we had other students who lived in a region where they had available to them um, health streaming content, online eBooks, multiple databases from EBSCO to ProQuest to everything in between um, to bountiful numbers of textbooks. So we recognise that that had to be at the heart of what we wanted to achieve. We wanted to combine all our budgets. Some had healthy, excellent, robust budgets. Some had a budget where there was barely enough to, to survive. We also wanted that recognition, and this was really important. We wanted recognition at executive level and from general manager level, that libraries were absolutely crucial to the success of TAFE Queensland. We wanted libraries to not be on the peripheral of what TAFE Queensland was doing. We wanted libraries to be right smack bang in the middle of the trunk of the tree, not at the very edge of some branch right on the end, where when you know, regular as required with trees and foliage, pruning might be required for the shape, etc. that libraries would be one of those things that get a little bit chipped and a little bit chipped and a bit more and suddenly we're not there. And in some regions that was happening. So we wanted to be right in the trunk of the trees so that if some, oh, you know, we need to assess, etc. well, you're going to have to chip out of the right at the core of the heart of your tree to be able to achieve that because we are that important to you. That was one of the number one things we wanted to achieve. So it started with um, coming together. Um, the leadership team of the, all the libraries came together and then the leadership team of all the libraries went back out to their core groups and their people. We could not have got to where we were if we didn't communicate, if we didn't listen if we didn't take feedback back to the core group, if we didn't then analyse that feedback and we didn't think of that, or, well, we'd love to please everybody, but we can't, so what's the priority? What can we do? And finally, in July of 2016, 1st of July 2016, we stood up and we got there. That took us about two and a half years. And on 1st of July, 2016, we became the TAFE Queensland Library Network. It was exciting, it was scary. It was what the heck am I doing kind of territory? Why on earth do I say yes to this? Um, you know, those, those moments where you think, oh, why on earth did I put myself forward for this role or that role? And I think I've made a really big mistake. But we were tasked with um, achieving all of those priorities 
which we were able to then drive ourselves. Um, but the pressure was on to prove ourselves as well. That first 12 months, we were determined just to achieve the basic things, to open our doors, to operate, to be able to um, welcome students and to be able to not overspend our budget. Um, and my team managers will take you through all the many challenges and where we are now. But we are so proud of um, that journey we've been on and the self-belief we've had and the challenges we've had, the um, times when political pressures, which happens to all of us, you know, in um, one way or another, sometimes multiple times throughout our careers, and that we've weathered that. We It hasn't always been, you know, um, I have this saying that it can't always be fairies at the bottom of the garden because, you know, you, you there aren't fairies at the bottom of the garden. There's just a lot of hard work at the bottom of the garden. But um, we've been able to weather it. Um, we're stronger for it. Those relationships that we've built from our library support officers to our information service officers to our librarians to our copyright specialists through to team managers and even myself with Library Network. There is no one person in our circle at TAFE Queensland that I could think, could we have done it without that person or that role or that team? No, we, we actually couldn't. Every single, single person um, played an enormously valuable role in order to get where we are. Um, what have we achieved just quickly? We achieved our own library network um, strategy and outcomes that, and I cannot tell you how important this part was, that was linked to TAFE Queensland's strategy and outcomes. None of what we achieved um, would have been possible if we hadn't linked it all the time and we keep looking and looking to the looking to the TAFE Queensland strategy and the TAFE Queensland vision, the TAFE Queensland mission, are we aligned to that? Because that's crucial to, to getting projects up on its legs, to funding, to um, FTE, to being successful. Sometimes you have to push a little bit and be a little bit bolshy to be able to get what you need. And that's that inner core of steel. But we've been able to achieve innovative library um, services, equity of access to resources. We are so proud of that, that it doesn't matter where you live, how you study, what social economic background you come from, what your circumstances are. As a student at TAFE Queensland, you could live, you know, at West End in Brisbane and be able to walk to the the campus that is busiest and kind of be seen to be shiny and et cetera, the South Bank campus, or you could live on Thursday Island and you have the same access to resources, mm -hmm. those two people. We are so proud of that. We are so proud of being flexible. We are so proud of being able to pivot that word um, and be able to, you know, I think of as many of you probably do, I think of Ross from Friends with the couch in that when he was moving and the couch gets stuck and he's yelling pivot 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 takes a lot of work you can't just yell it it takes a lot of work and sometimes the couch gets stuck in the stairwell and you gotta think all right we've got to go backwards we've got to undo it we're to, you know etc sometimes you get a new couch um we're contemporary we are able to um meet academic need and our staff Oh my gosh, what a team I've got. They're highly um, expert in their field. They're just so dependable. They are professional through and through. And they just support us as a senior leadership team. They are phenomenal. They are, they are the shining light of, my, of our network. They really are amazing. So that's, um, that's from me. I'm going to hand over now to my team managers who will take you through our four teams and, um, you know, what we've been able to do. So I'll hand back over to Trish now and Trish can do the intros. Thank you so much, Angela. Um, I think everybody on the call now knows exactly why I approached you and said, Angela, please, can you come and do this seminar for us? And I think 
I think one thing that everyone should know is that I did, I approached Angela and I said, Angela, I really think we should highlight what TAFE Queensland has done and bring those TAFE libraries, like raise that profile of TAFE libraries. And Angela said, um, that sounds good, but actually it should be my team. And it was, and I think that sense of your team coming through and the importance of your staff that came through so clearly in what you've just said, follows straight through into this presentation. And I'm pretty confident we're all about to see exactly why no one person is an island and it's always better when you can bring that team together. So without any further waffling on, I'm going to introduce the first member of that team. So Tanya Moore is the library, Client Services Manager. She started as a trainee in 1999 and since then has worked in many and varied positions in libraries. She's currently the Tape Queensland Library Client Services Manager and she concentrates on people and spaces. Take it away, Tanya. Thanks very much for that, Trish. Um, yeah, I'm just going to give you a bit of an overview of our journey and concentrate on a few different areas um, to let you know that, of course, there's there'd be a lot more than what I'm going to say in my brief discussion today that we've encountered and hills we've gone over. But to start with, um, hello everybody. Um, so we might start with where we started. We started off with a staffing structure that was most of it was permanent. It was given over to us from the six different regional libraries, which of course didn't necessarily fit with a library network model. So, uh, but given that a lot of the positions were permanent, we couldn't really move them around, we couldn't change them too often, but we quickly came up to the conclusion that we did need to alter some positions. So what we did was as people um, left the organisation for whatever reason that may have been, um, we evaluated the position, not just the type of position it was, it was also what level it was at, where did it actually sit within the organisation, was it at South Bank, was it at uh, Gladstone, you know, um, and we made the assessment of what we needed going forward. Um, we had a bigger picture plan, obviously, there um, that's that came into play, and that's how we did with the staffing. One of the big changes that we noticed was that the client service was one of the biggest teams and it sat under one manager. Now there could be anywhere between 45, 50 people under that manager. So we quickly came to the conclusion that we needed another layer of a team leaders underneath the client services managers to help rein in the client services team and move forward. So we started off um, with one position um, that we was created as a team leader and many eons forward, we now have four that is working quite well. We have two team leaders that sit in the Brisbane region, one that sits that looks after the Gold Coast and Southwest, and we have one that looks after North and East Coast. You'll see on the next slide why we needed the team leaders. This is the client service team breakdown. You can see I'm sitting up the top there. We've got my four team leaders underneath there and they look after the different staff as well as the libraries and lo locations across the state. So we've got div it divided up. We think we've got a pretty good mix there now um, as to what's happening there. One of the big things we implemented um, was a library live chat and an ask a librarian service. Now we had already implemented that, but we expanded it obviously during COVID when we all went into lockdowns and we were working from home. And so were a lot of our students studying online a lot more than they were. So we've expanded that and we now provide online classes via Zoom to students. Um, we have a screen sharing ability now with our library live chat so we can help our students more through the technical issues that they might come to us with or show them how to um, where to find the appropriate resources. We work this by um, a self selection for the library live chat rosters, which is working really well. So our staff go in there and put their names down and we have rarely have shifts that aren't filled there. We do have a roster for the Ask a Librarian and that's the group of people that answer the emails that might come in um, and they are changed each week. So everybody gets a chance to um, be doing that um, and helping the students. Also the library live chat uh, staff who may come across a question that might be a little bit more than they're able to answer online they'll turn that into a ticket and their Ask a Librarian team will pick that up and run with it from there. Here's the data. As you can see in 2020, um, our library live chat and Ask a Librarian data was quite high. When everybody was working from home, everybody was um, studying online. It's 
plateaued now, but it's still quite a lot of work. We run a we run um, library live chat between eight p eight a.m. and eight p.m. during week uh, weekdays, and um, on the holidays we do put it down to eight to four. That's both to allow our staff to take a break, as well as the fact that there is less uh, need for their service during the holiday period. So students have a lot of chance to um, come to us. And of course, as I said, we have the Ask a Librarian email service, and that's normally a 24 hour turnaround that students can experience there as well. Another big thing that we've done since the implementation of the library network is assess the library spaces. We've worked through and we've done a lot of updating. We've, got, we've bought a lot of new furniture for different, um, different places. When the 23 libraries that have actually got staff in them were handed over, um, they were in a variety of different conditions. One example I like to use is Ashmore. Ashmore was a demountable shed when we first started. <laughs> not the best place for students and not the best place for staff either. It is now a brand new library in a new building at Ashmore and it looks lovely. We've also engaged last year Kevin Henner. I don't know if many of you know about that, but he's quite well known for the uh, library for different library designs and different thinking in that way. And he came and he spoke to us and went through some of our libraries to have a look at the different designs in the libraries and give us ideas on what we could do going forward. Here's our example in Cairns. Cairns. This was without buying any shelving or buying any new furniture. This was just with our facilities helping us move the shelving to create the nook areas with furniture in there that Kevin um, was talking to us about. That It's worked wonderfully. It's given a new life to the Cairns Library. Uh, we've had so much excellent feedback from both staff and students. They love the way it's set out and the fact that it's not just rows of shelves anymore. It's a newly designed um, library that works really well. Another one, another example of one of the things we've done at libraries is we've put um, wheels on our shelving. This is Alexander, Alexandra Hills um, and Alexandra Hills Library does get used as a multi-purpose area at times. So we do have um, it where, uh, occasions where the library is actually shut and we do do massive exams in there. Putting the wheels on the library shelving has allowed that to happen much more easily. The shelving can be pushed to one side for the brief amount of time that we need and the library space can be uh, repurposed for the needs there. Toowoomba. We had some feedback from students up at our Toowoomba campus um, that they weren't, there wasn't any quiet spaces for them to study. Um, they needed something. So what we did, the Toowoomba camp um, library has two distinct spaces. One of them is what we call the round room, which is the photo you're seeing right now. We purposed this, that we just had some furniture placed around it for people to utilise in any way they wanted to. Got worked with ICT and facilities, got some computer networked down there, got some further tables in there, some appropriate signage, and now it's working very well as a quiet study space for students, where there's more group study space in other parts of the library. Pimley Cove. Pimley Co is another one of our brand new libraries since we've started the network. Um, it's an app, it's in a brand new building that TAFE created in Pimley Co. It is absolutely beautiful. Um, it is a very small book room in there that you can see from there. Um, it's got all the needs in there, but outside of the library, there's more computer space, there's more tables, there's more breakout areas. And our librarians work very well with the staff and students in that area and they love the new space. Mount Cravat is another one of our campuses and this really is a shot of more of the furniture type of things that we've created. More of these spaces that students can come and just relax, have a break, veg out a bit, um, work together, on some nice comfy furniture and that, that's really worked and we've done this in a lot of libraries, created these spaces there. That's the end of my presentation. So um, I'll, I'll take questions at the end if anybody does, but I might throw back to you, Phoebe, for the, oh, sorry, Trish, for the next person. And I might unmute myself and that will make it go <laughs> a lot more smoothly. Thank you so much, Tanya. That was absolutely fascinating. And I'm always a big fan of uh, slideshows that have lots of pictures of libraries. So thank you for warming my heart on that one.
I'm now really happy to introduce Randell Best, who's the Copyright and Licensing Manager. And as anyone will know, the uh, word copyright means that Randell's like straight to the top of my favourites list, not that I've got favourites, obviously. Randell um, has been in her role since April 2022 and Previous to that, has worked in a number of areas across the organisation, including in the library and information systems management, ICT project management and product development. So without any further ado, take us away, Randall. Thank you. Um, so hi, everyone. Today, I'm going to be talking to you about my team, Copyright, license, copyright and Licensing Services, and um, our role at TAFE Queensland. Um, I've got a bit of a PowerPoint to share with you. I think um, I can't see it at the moment. Can everybody else see it? No, I can't see it either, Randell. Hi, Phoebe. It's coming, you say screen sharing, but the slide is not up. We'll just see if we can make this happen. All right, I'll, I'll just start. Um, Sorry, one second. Um, I'll try and get it up, but do start. Okay. okay. All right. Will do. So prior to 2016, um, TAFE Queensland's copyright and license, licensing services um, were managed separately by each of the regions and, and by different business units within the regions. Um, so um, with the library amalgamation, copyright and licensing were eventually centralised into one, one team um, consisting of three staff within um, TAFE Queensland Library Network. So um, we're responsible for um, administering and paying the licence fees for our statutory and music licences. So um, you'd, all, you'd probably all be aware that our statutory licence is uh, an agreement that we have um, with the Copyright Agency, which allows us to copy and communicate third party intellectual property as an educational institution. There we go. Thank you, Phoebe. So um, we might just skip to um, our role, if that's all right. Yep. So um, so uh, we, we pay substantial licensed fees um, to, to, you know, for our statutory license. So we're always advising um, educators that it's better to link or obtain permission or use Creative Commons or public domain um, resources or, or um, licensed resources. And we're also required to um, participate in surveys or audits to identify the extent of copying under the license and collect details of works being copied by TAFE Queensland. So at the moment we're, we're coordinating a copyright survey of all of um, Gold Coast Regions units in um, Connect, which is our learning management system. Can I have the next slide please, Phoebe? Um, thanks. We also monitor illegal file sharing of um, TAFE Queensland intellectual property on websites and work with our legal services team to request takedowns. Uh, and we provide training and support through a number of different channels, uh, such as through um, an online unit, um, through webinars um, and attendance at educated forums and um, through our SharePoint site. So next slide, please. A lot of our a lot of our training um, is directed to teachers to show them best practice in creating teaching and learning resources. So this enables TAFE Queensland to meet its copyright obligations and again to reduce statutory license costs. So we also offer a suite of resources on our SharePoint site. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry about that on our SharePoint site and are responsible for maintaining TAFE Queensland's intellectual policy, intellectual property policy, procedure and work instructions. So next slide, please, Phoebe. TAFE, this is really important that in that TAFE Queensland owns all intellectual property immaterial created by its staff in their course of employment. So resources can't be shared or exchanged with third parties unless it's under a license agreement. Uh, 
Faith Queensland has a learning content repository where our intellectual property is um, a material that's obtained under licence or permission is stored. And we encourage staff to always use TAFE branding and our copyright statement when they're developing resources. Okay, we, we also um, purchased third party owned resources for TAFE Queensland under licence. So copyright and licensing services collaborates with multiple staff and teams across TAFE Queensland, including the academic board, faculty directors, ICT, cybersecurity, education technologies, legal services and purchasing and procurement. And that's to ensure that the license agreements are robust and meet the needs of TAFE Queensland as a whole training organisation. And we also assist um, other teams to interpret and renew older licences that were originally acquired for individual regions and transition them to a central TAFE Queensland agreement. So um, we ensure that each licence or subscription meets TAFE Queensland's business needs by establishing how, where, and by whom the content will be accessed, as well as um, organising a business case for funding and a legal privacy and cyber security review of those resources. And we'll then purchase and receive the licence or subscription and um, upload it to our content repository. And they're just some of the examples of subscriptions, sorry. Next slide. So, so um, we also manage professional memberships uh, for our educators and these are some of the examples. So what's ahead for copyright and licensing services? Um, more and more, we're participating in TAFE Queensland wide initiatives. We were part of the project team that recognised that there was a need for a central stock photography library. And we worked with ICT to negotiate a new licence agreement with Adobe. Uh, we also provided advice on how Adobe images should be used in teaching and learning resources and how to attribute them. One of the reasons copyright and licensing services were centralised within the library network was that TAFE Queensland recognised that libraries have um, a proven track record of managing licensed educational resources and, um, and ensuring that copyright and licensing obligations are met. So we'll continue to help to ensure all educators and students have access to high quality teaching and learning resources that enhance TAFE Queensland's reputation as a leading training, for, leading training provider. Thank you, everyone. I'll take some questions at the end and over to Chris. Thank you so much, Randell. Um, I think, as you say, the ability to work on what was already proven expertise and to deliver real value to the whole TAFE Queensland network is such a strength of the library. And I always loved to see Standards Australia up there as one of your licences that is managed. And <laughs> Uh, I would like to do a shout out to, again, Vet Libraries Australia, who, as we know, has been working with Dahlia and others for a long time advocating for better access to Standards Australia. And so huge um, thank you to TAFE Queensland, who's been very important in that whole journey. Mm, for thank us. you. And I think also um, for, the, for, for the, you know, library studies students that are watching, I mean, I'm a good example of someone who started as a cataloger and then became a liaison librarian. And, you know, my pathways has, has, hasn't been straightforward. So um, librarians and library technicians and all library staff have a lot of great skills to offer. Absolutely, and incredible transferable skills across mm. different positions and, mm. and a wide range of opportunities. Mm. Thank you so much, Randell. And now we're going to move on to Chris. So Chris Norlander has 13 years experience working in academic libraries. He joined the TAFE Queensland Library Network as part of its learning service team before moving into the team leader role. In 2021, he was appointed as manager library learning services, in which role he oversees the purchase of library resources and liaison activities. 
And in this role, Chris hopes to use data to direct the activities of the team. So I think that's an area of interest for an awful lot of the people who are on this call today. Chris, right. take it away. Thank you. Just wait for the slides to pop up. And just onto the next slide there. And if you could just jump through to the next slide. I'm wondering if we've got slight connectivity issues. Do you want to just start, Chris, and we'll see if we can fix these up? Okay, sounds good. Hi, everyone. It's great to be with you today. My name is Chris Nolander and the manager of the TAFE Queensland Learning Services team. I'm here today to share a story of resilience, adaption and success in the face of significant challenges faced by the TAFE Queensland Library Services team, Learning Services team, across the amalgamation of TAFE Queensland from six registered training organisations into one. Our Learning Services team provide li uh, liaison librarian support and work with subject areas statewide, identifying and purchasing resources in support of teaching and learning. The team also oversees and leads the development and delivery of information literacy. As with all teams, the amalgamation provided significant challenges. The six institutes had their own library collections, their own systems, their own policies, and their own cultures. How could we possibly bring all of these diverse elements together to create a unified library team that would meet the needs of our students across the, the TAFE Queensland footprint? Just onto the next slide there, please. So for the then manager of library learning services, this remarkable journey involved overcoming three key challenges. The first, a consolidation and management of existing library collections. Second, to provide equity of access, not just to resources, but to the delivery of information literacy, now at the statewide. And then the third, creating a cohesive liaison team, which was embedded in the emerging statewide curriculum development process. So starting with consolidation and management of collections, to tackle the complexities of merging these diverse collections, a thorough inventory of each library's holdings was produced. Collections were examined for strengths and weaknesses and identifying gaps and overlaps in subject coverage, as well as assessing the currency and relevance of materials. This provided a clear picture of the health of the collections, but in particular, it revealed that there had been a patchwork of investment and found large disparities in collection quality and currency across the state. They were haves and have nots. What was clear was there were challenges around providing equity of access to all of our students. So work was required to remedy the equity issue, but there were a number of headwinds. Budgets would not support the purchase of physical copies for each training location. And the scale of the new TAFE Queensland footprint, Southport, North to Cairns and West to Toowoomba and beyond, meant that circulating items through reservation was not going to be a suitable substitute. There was also a growing student expectation to have access to just-in-time support. As well, the organisation was increasingly using digital technology for teaching and assessment, and we needed to provide resources which were compatible. All of this determined that uh, electronic resources would be the primary solution to the equity issue. However, moving to an e-prefer collection was not without its challenges also. As this journey was embarked upon, several hurdles were encountered that, that required careful consideration. Among these challenges were navigating the complex licensing and copyright agreements, where agreements which were in place required renegotiation and consolidation. The library also needed to rationalize the many online instances of the TAFE Queensland Library presence into one single search, which could seamlessly provide access to an emerging collection of digital material. We also needed to work with both staff, uh, with staff both within the library and without, to help explain the changes and demonstrate the need for change to e-preferred, where, as mentioned, budgets, staffing and the needs of the organisation required the library to adapt and innovate to ensure it remained sustainable and vital to the success of TAFE Queensland. But the push towards E was not restricted to resources alone, and the learning services team was, and the learning services team was small and consisting of only seven librarians at its inception. So delivering information literacy to their subject areas scattered across the state using traditional methods was not going to work. And so as a consequence, we needed to wholeheartedly embrace the digi a digital revolution and invest in the development of high quality instructional videos tailored to the diverse needs and backgrounds of our student population. And so following a period of training and development, our dedicated learning and client services librarians work collaboratively as part of a statewide team to create a rich library of instructional material. The videos covered a wide range of topics from subject specific content 
to research techniques, citation styles, and essential study skills. Our online presence was further enhanced with the delivery of live information literacy classes, commencing with Adobe Online Rooms, and we've continued to operate in the online teaching space, rapidly adopting new technologies such as Zoom for the purposes of enhancing delivery. We now run a series of online classes at the start of each semester, providing online orientations, reference sessions, search training, and subject-specific content, for example, like clinical key and Australian standards training. And these sessions are recorded and archived on our site as an ongoing reference for students. Finally, and in parallel with the activities shared, the learning services team worked to embed itself into our TAFE Queensland peer learning communities, where our PLCs provide a forum for the development of curriculum for each area of training delivered by TAFE Queensland. And as a part of these communities, the learning services librarians attend meetings in full to understand the continuing resource needs of each community, gathering feedback on the spend of our library books and uh, publications budget. We use it to promote library classes, both face-to-face -face and online, as well as our emerging services. We complete library impact statements as part of the TAFE Queensland quality review process to ensure TAFE Queensland has the requisite library resources to support the commencement of new courses of study. We also provide a, a, a vital contact point for securing products, uh, product licenses as well as memberships. Our learning services librarians are valued members in this space, which is exemplified by the fact that if a staff member is absent through leave, there is an expectation that they will be replaced. So the amalgamation journey, which was difficult and is not at its end, has uh, allowed us to grow into a highly functional unit, which provides the TAFE Queensland with a valued set of resources and access, equitable access to high quality training materials. But as we look forward, we continue to review enhanced library support embedded with the learning management system. We seek to partner with content writers to provide targeted support for the product development process. We hope to review instructional videos with a view to develop TikTok length content. We want to complete a review of our First Nations resources, and we want to seek to surface data which helps us demonstrate the impact of our collections and investigate options for providing our students and staff with access to high quality media content. But we also want to understand the emerging impacts of AI too on our collections. And this onto the final slide with my contact details there and the little QR code you can scan to complete a survey and also ask any follow-up questions that you might have as well. Thank you. Thank you so much, Chris. I hope everyone's got their phone out and managed to scan that before it disappeared. Again, absolutely fantastic to have a look at um, what you've achieved and the journey that you've been on through uh, that whole process. And I have to say, I'm, I've got big hopes now from Tara because that was the third slide presentation in a row where I was just sitting there going, geez, they are so beautifully illustrated to get the key points across. So I think if, you know, amongst all of the great content, there's definitely something I'm taking away from the presentation today just on the impact of a really sharp looking presentation as well. So to wrap us up for today, I would love to now hand over to Tara. So Tara has worked in libraries for many years and has been working with TAFE Queensland for just over five of those. She's manager of virtual services and resources, where she works with her team in managing all of the library's online services and resources, which includes the integrated library system, TAFE Queensland library website and databases. So only a tiny job. Yes. Tara, please take it away. <laughs> Thank you, Trish. Um, let me get the slideshow opening. I can start speaking. So um, 2016, out of the amalgamation of the regional teams and the library network, the virtual library services team was created. Um, and as there was a move to more online resources and to allow for greater online enrolments and online learning and equity of access to our across our many campuses, um, it was realised we needed a team whose key focus was in improving and diversifying services to facilitate an efficient and effective access to resources for both staff and students. I don't know if I'm going to get my slideshow or not. <laughs> okay, I'll continue on. So um, initially, um, with the amalgamation of the teams, one of the first um, tasks of the virtual services team was moving the different systems 
um, and prepare the data to be moved into one system. So um, we had six different um, iterances of our integrated library service. Um, and most of the items were physical items. We did have some online items, um, but um, or some e-resources, but most of it was putting it all into one thing. So as you can imagine, everyone did everything differently in the different regions. So um, it was a bit of work to get all of that into um, one system. And it's work that's still ongoing. So um, there's always work to be done in um, all of that data that we have. Um, we also had to work in getting um, with the student management system to have a, an automatic load of um, student accounts into the system. So um, that was another huge task that was taken on. Um, we uh, had multiple regional versions of the library website. So we had to create a new website which contained all of the centralised information and resources for all of the regions and campuses. Um, we implemented a new discovery layer for our catalogue and databases to integrate. I think you're going forward too far, but that's okay. Um, and we um, set up a new authentication system as well, um, which integrated with all of the systems. Uh, we created templates for the statewide subject guides, um, which were developed um, with the learning services librarians to assist their PLCs with current and reliable information relating to their particular subject areas. And at this time, the virtual services team were also um, assisting in negotiating statewide licenses for resources. Um, so as you can see, when we first, before we amalgamated, we had different versions um, for every, for all the regions um, that were managed by, sometimes they were managed by systems librarians at some of the regions. Um, it was very time consuming, staff needed to know how, how to do HTML editing to do a lot of the, the changes on there and the information on each of the sites, as you can see, was different. Um, so when the regions came together, we created a single library website, um, which was managed by the virtual service team. This website was created um, using the OPAC and today the one you can see on the screen now, um, we've created an updated version of the website using the SpringShare product. Um, it has integrated widgets um, and uh, the um, discovery layer search is on the home page. Um, we're hoping that it has a more cohesive experience for students. It allows access to all resources available to them from the one location. Um, the next slide is a, just a screenshot of our discovery layer, which has um, integrated widgets and functionality, um, giving students the ability to access most database resources from one search. Um, we've been able to integrate quite a lot of our databases from our, a lot of our resources into this discovery layer, which has been great. Um, as a, as a virtual services team manages uh, man, a lot of services, um, we have a lot of knowledge of a lot of different systems. Um, so we manage the integrated library system, which is SPIDUS. We look after all of the online resources, um, data by, databases and websites. We manage the library website. We also manage equipment held in the library. Um, so, and this includes our mobile touch screens, which we have in many of our libraries, which are used for um, library marketing, um, for inf information literacy classes and presentations by teachers and for student interaction. So they're very popular. We also manage um, the self-check kiosks. We have three third-party kiosks at some of our locations, but our integrated library system, Spiders, has a self-service kiosk feature, and we maintain this at 17 of our 23 campus locations, which is great. Um, the virtual services team also um, investigates any new resources and products for the library. Um, we also implement and train and ensure that staff are trained in using and promoting these new products and resources. We consistently upgrade systems. 
and we schedule, test and monitor any of all of those upgrades. And probably one of our most involved responsibilities for the team is a resolution of any issues that staff or students have in relation to the many systems and products that the library provides. So um, yeah, that is that is a huge part of the work that we do. Um, so our online resources, as I mentioned before, we have the integrated library service, which is SPIDUS. We have the discovery layer, which is EDS or EBSCO Discovery Service. We use SpringShare, so we use SpringShare to create our website via LibGuides. Um, we use it for statistics. We also ask a librarian a live chat, um, online survey. So there's a lot of products that we use in that. And um, our authentication application is Easy Proxy. Um, we currently subscribe to over 45 different databases. And our most used databases are Clinical Key, MIMS, and Australian Standards. So um, we're always taking on new products and looking at new opportunities. Um, some of our most recent um, additions are, as uh, Tanya was mentioning, Ask a Librarian on live, Library Live Chat, um, Cybersecurity. So we've been working with securing our student data, cleaning up of our system data and updating our processes to ensure that they are secure. We have updated our troubleshooting procedures. So we've implemented a new process where staff are able to log tickets um, with the VS team via a centralized service desk. Uh, we've updated the library website to make it more aesthetically pleasing, easy to use and accessibility compliant. Uh, order, and we've automated processes to enable greater staff and time efficiency. Um, and some of those are the OAI PMH Harvest, EDI and um, borrower loads via FTP. Um, and as mentioned earlier, um, we also maintain the touchscreen TVs and the self-service kiosks. So looking to the future, as I said, we're always looking for new opportunities. Um, so we would um, also looking at increasing our cybersecurity uh, we're looking at providing single sign-on for staff and students to bring it in line with other TAFE Queensland services um, and making accessibility um, to it, the library products even easier for our students and staff. Um, possible implementation of a chatbot in our live ch chat service, major upgrades to our systems, um, further integration of APIs to our systems to improve access and procedures, processes, sorry, and also looking at investigating AI products such as chat GPT and how we can possibly integrate it into the library to improve the overall experience for students and staff. Thank you, Trish. <laughs> I need some of your tech support. <laughs> Thank you so much, Tara. That was absolutely fascinating. And I love that you left us on chat GPT, which is possibly the single hottest issue in the yes. sector at the moment. Just yep, leaving us sure. here for the next edition. Yes, yeah, for sure. <laughs> We've got time for just a couple of really quick questions, though I noticed Randell is doing her best to subvert this by answering them in the chat. I only um, answered one. I'm, I'm, <laughs> <laughs> um, just for anybody who who didn't see that, the question was how many staff are in the virtual services team, uh, and we we've got, uh, I believe, Tara, three full time staff and one part time staff person. So it's not a a huge team, but um, no, it's not. Get through a we lot. do a lot. Yes, yeah. <laughs> small uh, but mighty. Hey. <laughs> I like that. Yes, yes. <laughs> I've got a question here from Julie who asks whether your self-check devices are from Bibliotheca. So know? we do have the third party ones that, that, as I was saying, are Bibliotheca, so they're integrated with our um, library management system, Spidus, but we also have started implementing the Spidus kiosk. So um, that's just through a web interface at the different locations. 
Um, so it kind of takes out that having to communicate um, with those other machines. And I'll just add to what Tara's said there. Um, we really were invested in self-check in all of our um, 21 libraries. Um, but as you can imagine, um, whilst the, we liked the Bibliotheca product and it's a great product, it's a great look and feel, um, we simply couldn't do 21 times, you know, the Bibliotheca cost. No matter how... Um, clever and creative we were with the budget. And so the virtual services team um, came to our rescue and said, listen, we can do this. It won't look quite as schmick as a beautiful brand new Bibliotheca product, but we can make it um, work. We can make it look great. We can make it simplified and something that all the students can use. So the virtual services team have really pulled a rabbit out of a hat to be able to achieve um, that self-check option um, at all of our libraries um, to in, you know, with very little outlay and lots of support from them. Um, Self-check's important, but it's not the be all and end all. Why did we go that way? Uh, really, it was to free up our staff time so they could spend more time on that student uh, staff to student ratio and helping with that professional level help that our students needed. Um, there was, you know, we didn't reduce any FTE. We just added another layer of support and delivery. That's brilliant. Thank you so much, Angela. Um, it is 157, so I might, I'm afraid I am going to have to pull this to a close. I am sure people have got more questions and thoughts, and I think we will definitely have to get um, you all back at some point to, to maybe delve into some of these things in a little more detail. And I noticed in the... Uh, chat below, um, Beatrice Arroz from, from TAFE New South Wales, who of course have just gone through a similar amalgamation, um, has promised me an upcoming seminar on their journey. So I think this, this might be the start of something excellent in the series. Um, so I want to say a huge thank you to all of our presenters today. I, you know, I cockily like to think I know something about libraries, but to be honest, that was absolutely mind blowing for me as well. There was so much content in there and it's been such an inspiring journey watching what you have all done. And I think you know, coming back to Angela, when you sort of started talking about maybe a bit of the fear and trepidation at the start of the journey, but knowing where your clear purpose was and what it is that you needed to achieve. And I think you can see that running so seamless through the, the four presentations from the different managers, which all had their own strengths, but you could see all the way through all of the spots in which they interlinked and worked together. And I think that's been an absolutely fantastic presentation. So please, um. I know from all of us, and feel free to drop your thanks in chat. Thank you so much. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, Randell. Thank you, Tanya. Thank you, Tara. Thank you, Angela. And thank you all for coming. Please do keep an eye on the um, on the website and everything else for more exciting instalments from Vet Libraries. And I will uh, foreshadow in particular for anybody who is working in the vet sector, it's still a little bit under wraps, but we are hoping that we will soon have something public about a vet specific uh, conference or summit towards the end of the year. So I hope to see many of you there for that. My thanks to everybody again. Have a fantastic rest of Wednesday. <laughs>